Hey up YouTube, so today we're going to quickly talk about nitrogen, the effects it has in your soil, how to correct it if you've got a deficiency, and that's going to be about it really. Uh, at the end of the video also I'm sowing my seed for the one seed challenge, so be sure to stick around for that, or if that's what you're interested in, it's right at the end. If you like the sounds of all that, please subscribe, hit the like button, and remember, please share the videos. It does help immensely. So, let's get on. Good morning, YouTube. Okay, guys. So, what we're going to start with is why do plants need nitrogen? Nitrogen is what the plant uses are the amino acids in the plant use to create the cells of the plant. So without nitrogen, there physically is no plant. It cannot make the cells required to make itself. So that's why nitrogen is so important. Now, we've already done the testing of the nitrogen in the soil, but there are telltale signs of things going wrong whilst you're growing. So a nitrogen deficiency appearing whilst the plant is growing. Things like mosaicing of leaves, yellow blotching of leaves, that will show you things. That will show you that there is a nitrogen deficiency in that patch of soil that that plant has sort of grown into. And there are things you can do to correct that, which we're going to talk about. But we're going to start with sort of an organic approach of fixing the nitrogen in the soil. And that would be what you can do through the non-growing season. And the, the primary thing you can do in the non-growing season, hello Sasha, is to manure your beds, your soil, however your chosen growing method is. Now in my instance, in year one, that was my chosen method it did come with its pitfalls for me unfortunately i did introduce a few weeds because i used horse manure this is one of the reasons i've since gone over to alpaca manure it's because of the multi-stage digestive system alpaca manure carries a lot less weed seed and things like that a lot less of the things you don't want i mean i ended up with cooch grass and mare's tail after using horse manure so goes to show doesn't it um, and traditionally these things would be done at the end of the growing season now it depends on what you grow as to when the end of your growing season is for me in year one the end of my growing season was September the soil was was so bad that it was pointless me trying to overwinter anything I shut the plot down I manured and treated the ground and that has started to show benefits the other benefits behind using manures is if, like me, you're on a, a heavy sand, heavy clay. Mine's literally sort of a foot or so of quite heavy clay and then sand underneath. It's a sandbank underneath. It was an old riverbed. Uh, so for me, one of the main benefits of using manure is the nitrogen because it will just wash out. But it will also, over the years... It will replenish the quality of the soil. It will it will add more organic matter into the soil and it will loosen and well, increase the quality. There are other things you can do at the end of the growing season if you want to fix your or help fix your nitrogen. You can plant borage. Now borage it will sprout and the, the thing I the one of the reasons I really like borage actually is the bees really love it. It becomes a really critical early flower for the bees borage is a good option you tend to let it grow then turn it all into the soil the other one is to grow things like peas and beans field beans things like that not necessarily stuff to eat but if you let the pea or bean grow to a certain point it has a, a symbiotic relationship with a rhizome the rhizome gives it nitrogen to enable it to grow the rhizome takes a little bit of energy from the plant in order to perpetuate itself it's a symbiotic relationship it's, it's present pretty much across the board and it's not a negative one 
But what you can do is you can take advantage of this relationship by allowing the plant to grow to probably just above seedling stage. I think most of the research I says you allow your field beans to get to about six to eight inches tall. What you then do is then turn in the whole plant into the soil. Break it up if you want, but you turn the whole plant into the soil. That means the leafy greenage gives nitrogen back. But more importantly, the roots and the rhizomes that have been working together, the rhizomes feeding the roots and, and vice versa, all break down into the soil. That will give you an increased return because you've not let the plant grow to maturity. So the plant has not been sucking out a load of nitrogen to create a fruit. The last one, which is kind of uh, controversial, and the reason being is some people say it has a negative effect. Some people say it doesn't. It depends on your soil and what your belief is. The last one is coffee grounds. Coffee grounds are extremely high in nitrogen. They will give a lot back to your soil. The reason it's controversial is a lot of people say it will acidify your soil. Some people say it won't. There are numerous official studies that say both things. So take from it what you will. My use, my advice would be to use it in a composter and then test that compost before you use it as a mulch or as a, as a feed for your soil. That will give you a pH balance of the compost. From there, you'll be able to gauge if it's gonna have a major effect on your soil. That would be my advice if you're concerned about that. There's one more, uh, which is a form of ammonium nitrate, which is urea or urine. You can use this in a diluted form. Human works just fine. I would advise doing it through winter, not wine, not watering your fruit with it. But it is something that you can do. You can spray urea on your grounds and the ammonium nitrate is converted into nitrogen by the natural soil bacteria. And it's a very good, albeit heavily unused, form of adding nitrogen to your soil. So they prime organic fertilisers. The reason I've, I've separated them out as they are is because your organic tends to be a slow release that requires a bit of time to break down and be gathered by the soil permaculture to be available for the plants. Your non-organics, and there is one in the non-organics that people are going to say, well, surely that's organic. It depends. Your non-organics tend to be stuff that is readily available. So your tomorites, your grow moss, things like that. All those the nitrogen, the nutrients that they provide tend to be almost instantly available to the plants. Whereas if you put even well rotted manure around the top of your plant, it still takes time for the plant to be able to take advantage of it, which is a job actually you can do in March. You can be mulching your fruit trees with well rotted manure. By the time they come to fruit which gives you some indication as to how long it takes for these nutrients to be ready but by the time it comes to fruit it's starting to feed on those nutrients that you've mulched with now so you're talking three four months down the line so that puts it in a bit of perspective for you but you've got some chem you've got plenty of chemical options out there if like me the nitrogen levels were so low that you require the use of both the reason mine is so low is because it just washes out, as I've already said. So you've got things like, I've got a few listed here. You've got Kempac, high nitrogen feed. Uh, I believe they call it Kempac Formula 2. You've got 6X, chicken manure pellets. They are natural. However, not all sources of, of chicken manure pellets are listed as organic. So you've got 6X, you've got uh, Grow Shua, you've got Vitax, there's, there's loads out there, but they're not all listed as organic. So I'm not, I'm not putting that in the organic field because you may not have access to a organic variety. You've got, once again, 6X do another one, a fibrous manure. They also have a fair few others out there, but they're the two really for, for nitrogen. You've got the, the, the controversial one, the one that a lot of people are going to say it belongs in the organic one. 
and that's fish blood and bone. The reason I, is I've not put it in the organic fertilizers is because once again, whilst the base product or the base resource for making it is primarily organic, it's not necessarily the finished product isn't necessarily organic. And it also, to be true organic, depends on what the fish were fed as to whether the finished product is organic or not. So that's why it's not in the organics. The also, the other primary distance differences I've already talked upon is the availability of the nutrients, how readily available they are to the plants. Now, fish blood and bone is along the longer period of time before it's available. I believe it's somewhere between six weeks and is available then to the plant for around about six months. That's probably stretching it a little bit, but that is what some sources say. There are other things that you can use, like I said, that are instantly available. So your tomorites, your seaweed extracts, things like that, they're, they're instantly available sources of nitrogen or pretty much instantly available to the plant. And then you've got interims like your 6Xs, like your pellets, you grow more, things like that. They take a little while to get down into the soil. But once again, in terms of, of relativity, so you've got manure that can take six months to be available. You've got fish blood and bone that can take six weeks. You've got your, your granular feeds, which can be one to two weeks to be available. Then you've got your liquid feeds, which can be available in as little as 24 hours, depending on what your growing medium is. Or even instantly, really, if you're a hydroponics grower, but this entire thing doesn't really apply to you. Um, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, your granular feeds are quite readily available. There is one more that I want to mention, and that's biochar. It's becoming a bit of controversy, controversial, like uh, rock dust did last year. Biochar has, in some instances, been marketed as a soil treatment. However, the reason I'm not mentioned, talking about it as a soil treatment, every single uh, white paper, every single study, be it independent or funded, uh, of all, at least the ones I could find, used it as a propagation and growing fertilizer and not a soil fixer. So I would say it wants to be somewhere around the granular uh, to fish blood and bone mark, maybe sitting in the middle as, as to, in terms of its availability. However, once again, the things that I've been able to find, the research I've been able to do, do state that it has much further long-term benefits with regards to the steadiness of, of nutrient release and the amount of nutrient it releases over time but like i said all the tests that i could find they've been done over a short space of one growing season from sowing to harvest every test says that it's an amazing product it's up to you if you want to try it it's up to you it is out there it is a thing and it is proving quite popular with the professional growers but as with anything new it's up to you and the price is really really up there for most of us things like your organics like your manures and things like that we can pretty much get for the cost of fuel so for a t i mean i've got a price here i did have it somewhere see biochar two and a half kilos is 15 pounds not including delivery that wouldn't treat that would treat my raised beds and my propagation for for one year Whereas it will not do what man, what fifteen pounds worth of manure would do with regards to improving my soil structure. So it's up to you. There are many many different products for many many different purposes. No one person's soil is the same as another person's soil. So that's why there's so many products. But the standards really that have been used, tried and tested for many years, is manure in your ground through winter. Or green manuring or even both 
then you've got as you're coming into the planting season prepping your ground with fish blood and bone and then whilst in the growing season you've got things like grow more and your liquid feeds like tomorite seaweed extract things like that and always remember your plants will tell you if they've got a deficiency which is something i'm hoping either i'm going to cover or one of the uh, one of the new contributors is going to cover coming up soon but we're going to try and do that through the growing season where we can hopefully generate some examples one important fact that's worth mentioning if you've tested your soil and you've got a sort of medium-ish reading don't panic don't worry, you can cause calcium lock by giving your soil too much nitrogen. What this means essentially is the soil permaculture will take, if it has too much nitrogen, it will take the calcium and change it. I can't remember exactly what the term is, but it will change it into a, into a form of calcium that is non-available to the plant or not readily available to the plant. This is what I see and many other growers see many, many times. Many new growers make the mistake of feeding tomato plants quite heavily. Whilst tomato plants are quite hungry, you need to be aware that this, in, in actual fact, feeding you things like tomatoes too much causes calcium lock, which causes blossom end rot. And then you have to have another knee jerk reaction and another treatment with the likes of Epsom salts or calcium sulfate um, where it could easily be avoided by just regular plain watering and only treating a deficiency if you see it arise so with that warning added in there I hope I've, I've, I've given you some some steering and some help into and some guidance as to as to what you can do like I said this is part of a series but hopefully like I say when you put them all together if you follow them step by step hopefully you'll get some useful information out of it coming up after this is a quick video of me planting my one seed for my one seed challenge it is currently over there on the windowsill I actually forgot to do it in the live stream on Saturday night so stick around for that. Hopefully, like I say, you've gained something useful from this information. Please remember to like, share and subscribe, especially the sharing. If you see somebody who you think this video could be useful for, please wing them a link. So without all being said, oh, also there is now some merchandise available, some conversation shared merchandise, and I am constantly adding to the available merchandise because I like to play about with graphics and things like that. That's all down in the description. Check it out. Buy some if you like it. If you if you if there's something you'd like me to see me design and put in the merch store, let me know and I'll see if I can do it. So until next time, folks, I'll see you later. Hey guys, real quick one. I'm just doing my one seed challenge. I can find where I put the seeds. There they are. So I am doing for my one seed challenge one beef master. I'm cheating a little bit using an F1. Didn't realise there were F1s when I asked uh, grow seed for them. So my uh, one seed challenge is actually sponsored by Grow Seed. Sent me the seeds. So uh, let's get it sown, eh? It's going in. Oh, what size this pot is? I've had it for ages. One 15 centimetre pot that says primrose on the side of it. Reason being is because I don't want to pot it up for a little while. So, one seed. <laughs> We've got a better specimen. This one's a tiny one. Hang on. That's a better specimen in the middle of said pot. I'll show you in a second. Let me just put these seeds back in this little... Uh... There we go. I don't even know if it's going to show up. There you go. There's your one seed. 
I'm going to park it in. And as per the rules of the competition, that's it. I will only be sowing this one beef stick because whilst I do like beef steak tomatoes, I don't eat a lot of them. So they're not great on they're not great on flavour. They're just well, they're great on burgers, aren't they? Let's be honest. And I don't make I don't, I don't know, but I don't make that many burgers. I might sow some more, but this one's going to go home and it will remain at home so if i do sow some more they'll be down on the plot but becky nick who else i can't, I can't even remember where the one seed challenge comes from there you go there's my one seed challenge it'll be going there we go jobs are good and i shall label it beef steak one seed so give me a sec, let me write this, beef stick, one seed, chow, there we go, it's upside down, one seed chow, you get the picture, beef steak, and that's it, like I said, this guy will be going home, won't be staying down at the plot. It'll be getting planted up at home when it when he's when he's he she it is finished in that pot, and that's where he she it will live. So guys, I'll see you next time.